the psychophage stampedes into battle with frightening speed. They devour any prey in their paths, but especially favour those victims with tasty psychic powers. In this video we'll be painting the humongous Tyranid Psychophage, in the colours of High Fleet Leviathan to battle ready. We'll also be adding a few extra techniques to take your model to the next level. If you are new to painting, you can check out the Citadel Colour Painting Essentials videos to learn more about painting and techniques. The paints we'll be using are on the screen right now. Remember that we're painting to match the box art, but you can paint your models however you like. Any additional equipment that we've used is also on the screen, but feel free to use whatever brushes you're comfortable with. And also, if you don't have mediums, you can swap these out with water instead. The first thing we need to do is undercoat the model, and for this colour scheme we've used Wraithbone. It's a nice warm undercoat that can get us ready for those contrast colours we'll be using. And it's also a good idea to have a pot of Wraithbone to hand, just in case we need to tidy up any mistakes later on. We'll start by applying a base coat of Wraithbone all over the model. This just gives us an overall finish that will match the pot in case we need to tidy up any mistakes, as the spray has a slightly different finish. You'll only need one thin coat to fully cover over, so don't worry about being neat at this stage. Just make sure that you get all of those fleshy membranes and the underside of the belly covered. Now I'll add a thin down layer of Magos Purple. We'll combine two parts contrast medium to one part Magos Purple. This will give us a great colour to settle into those recesses, but not overwhelm the upper areas of the skin. We'll be applying this all over, so we can get into every recess and around those carapace edges. So don't worry about being neat at this stage. Just make sure the contrast doesn't pull too heavily, as we want a nice light pinky purple tone. If you want to add an extra easy step to take the model to the next level, we want to give this model a warm fleshy colour over the abdomen and legs. And for this we'll be dry brushing Kislev flesh. We are doing this now so we can avoid getting any of this colour onto the carapace if it was already painted. By using circular motions we're just hitting those raised surfaces and leaving any of those recesses nice and purple. If you feel that the dry brush isn't hitting some of those areas enough or looks slightly patchy, you can use a small brush to tidy up with a small amount of paint. Next we can add a light dry brush of Corax White over the colours we've already painted. We are doing this now so it can be messy before we paint any of the smaller details. By using circular motions we can get the raised points covered without being too heavy handed. This is a subtle effect, so if you want some definition you can apply a second dry brush. Just don't apply too much pressure or we can end up with a lumpy unwanted texture. Now we'll add Gal Vorback Red to the mouth tentacles and back talons. We'll use a couple of thin coats to build up the colour, avoiding any Kislev flesh details and Magos purple skin. If you make a mistake just follow the past steps to tidy up. You can even do thin layers towards the end of the tentacles by glazing with this colour. Just make sure you're light in application and leave each layer to fully dry. Next we'll be using Nagarath Knight for the carapace armour. Remember to thin this paint down slightly as it is a base paint, but we want a nice smooth layer of colour. Apply this in several thin layers to build up to a solid colour. Just take your time as if we make any mistakes it takes more time to tidy up, so use a smaller brush if you think you might smudge the paint onto the skin. With the carapace painted we can move on to Abaddon Black for the claws and the eye sockets. Just like with Nagaroth Knight we want to thin down our paint and apply it in the same way. You can even add a small thin recess line between the carapace plates. This helps break up that mass of purple chitin and looks more layered. These small, simple yet effective techniques can really make your model stand out more, even at battle ready. Next we'll paint the teeth with Corax White and a small layer brush. Picking out the teeth will really help them stand out from the black base coat, finishing off the face with a lot of detail with little work. We can also tidy up the smoke plumes on top with this colour, ready for our next paint. With that dry we'll apply one part Griff Charger Grey with one part Contrast Medium to the smoke on top of the carapace. Try and apply most of it to the middle and the bottom of the smoke, as we want to have a slight gradient getting lighter towards the top. You can add a second coat to the bottom to make it darker, and tidy up any raised parts that are too dark with Corax White. 
And now we'll paint the eyes with Flash Gets Yellow. By using a small airbrush to get into those smaller areas, we avoid getting the yellow onto the skin or the carapace. But if you do get any on the skin or the carapace, just tidy up with the previous colours. Your Tyranid Psychophage is looking amazing, and you can stop here. Or you can keep watching to add some extra details to your model. Now we'll add a bit of definition to that carapace armour with an easy highlight of Slanesh Grey. We can do this by thinning down the paint and applying it in small choppy lines around the edge of the carapace plates. You can see it gives more of a natural highlight than normal, giving a chipped chitin effect. Just make sure you use a small layer brush and keep that paintbrush pointed. After that first highlight is dry, we'll add another simple highlight to the claws with Thunderhawk Blue. We don't need to highlight every edge or detail, so we'll pick out the most prominent or visible. Just keep that brush pointed and keep that paint thin so it flows off the brush. Next we'll add a tusk or fur highlight to those massive dark red talons on the back legs. Just like before, keep those lines neat as you can, and you can also use the side of your brush on the flat edges. And there we are, your Tyranid Psychophage is finished and ready to gorge themselves on the powers of their poor victims. As you can see, there are a few extra details on the base. You can use Lead Belcher for the pipes, Griff Charger Grey for the stones, McCrag Blue for that poor Ultramarine's arm, and Mephiston Red for the blood. This will take no time at all if you want to add that grim dark aesthetic to the base. You can see that our model is based using Armageddon Dust, and if you'd like to learn more about technical paints, you can check out our video all about them. For more tutorials, tips and tricks, check out citadelcolor.com, or you can head to your local Warhammer store where our amazing staff will be happy to help you. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye!